Hey there, everyone. We're going to go ahead and let folks start filtering in. In the meantime, we'd love to hear from you. Go ahead and use that chat box at the bottom of your Zoom window and just let us know if you've been to a webinar, um, perhaps with Vernier, AD Instruments, Biorad. Um, if you've attended one of our webinars, um, we'd love to hear from you. Otherwise, it would be great to know, you know, um, is this your first time? Very cool. Welcome back, Candice. Thank you so much. Well, I know we have a lot of really exciting content to talk about today. I think we'll probably still have a few more folks coming in, um, but since, you know, it's after four o'clock here in Portland, I'll go ahead and get started. Um, thank you all so much for joining us for Got Protein, Teach Macromolecules in an Interactive and Engaging Way to College Biology Students. We are thrilled to talk about you know, this with you and explore some really great technology. Um, today's agenda is going to be, uh, we're gonna go ahead and take a quick poll. We'll meet our presenters, um, go over a quick introduction to the LT Biology Collection, go over a live demo of a lab, um, explore some active learning in LT, and then we've left a little time at the end to do a Q&A session with some of the subject matter experts that are here in the room with us. So with that, we'll dive right in. I do have a quick poll for you all to take. Um, I'll go ahead and launch that. Do, 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 do. Really, this just helps us know how we can gear this webinar towards what you're looking for. So you should have an option to let us know what you teach and then um, what type of information you'd be interested in learning more about. This will not impact you know, what we send you after the webinar. Um, everyone's gonna get the same information, but it helps us learn, so. All right, the answers are in. I'll pass it back off to you, Melville. Great. <clears throat> Thank you so much. It looks like we've got an e even split and people are um, even split of high school and college. Um, and then most people are interested in lab content and LT and we will, don't worry, we will discuss both. Um, that's the whole idea here is that there is, we're gonna be discussing this one lab that is actually in LT. So you're gonna get both lab content and how LT works. So with that, why don't you, you meet our your presenters there? So you're gonna, there's three of us, um, John, Damon, and Haley. We're all gonna introduce ourselves. My name is John Melville. Um, I am the director of biology at Vernier Science Education. Um, I have a BA bachelor's degree in biology and also in psychology from Sonoma State University. I got my PhD in zoology at Oregon State University um, in, neuro, uh, in zoology. And then I was a postdoctoral fellow at the University of Oregon. Um, but most importantly for this webinar, I was a professor, an assistant professor of biology at a small college called Warper College. And I've taught both at the two-year level and four-year level. And my focus primarily was on majors and non-majors courses in biology and neuroscience. Um, but I, I really liked teaching uh, active learning, using labs, and I really put an emphasis on data collection and inquiry. And when I came to Vernier, that's one of the big things that I did is I helped develop an inquiry book and I worked with BioRad to develop uh, several labs and use their content in our books. And um, one of them is the lab that we're gonna be doing today. Hey everybody, my name is Damon Tai. I work for BioRad Laboratories as their curriculum and train specialist for the Western portion of the United States. I have a biology and chemistry split major from St. Mary's College. Um, I taught high school up in Portland, Oregon, and then moved down to the San Francisco Bay Area to work on the Human Genome Project. I spent about 10 years in the national labs working on large genomics projects, and probably my small claim to fame is actually getting the first whole genome out of a single bacterial cell, uh, all of a sudden we could not culture. Um, I ended up joining BioRed mainly because when I was working at the National Labs, I was running into this kind of what I thought was a strange problem, which was we would get these four-year grads applying for jobs. They'd be fantastic in the interview, and then we'd bring them into the lab, train them on what we thought we needed to train them on to do their process, and then I'd watch them use simple things like a micropipette, and then watch them completely not know how to use that and just go, oh my gosh, this is something that they should already have. 
Um, and being a former educator, I thought, you know what, this is something we really need to make sure we've got more of the hands-on education around biotech going on at high schools, colleges, et cetera. And so I basically joined Byrad to drive more of that into classroom environments. I'll go ahead and pass it over to Haley. Sweet, thanks, Simon. Yeah, my name's Haley Angus. I got my BS from the University, BS in Biology from the University of Montana um, in 2016. I also got my master's in Modern Human Anatomy from the University of Colorado at CU Anschutz. Um, and I presented my educational research at EB 2021, and I got first place in our educational research for my presentation. I'm really big on educational research. That's my passion. And I started working at AD Instruments because they are a big proponent of active learning. Um, and that's what I, based on the research, I know active learning is a really effective way to engage your students. Um, I also am a big proponent of making science more accessible. And then I believe that if we do that, we can create a more equitable and diverse scientific and medical community. Um, and that's really through science education. So I'm really happy to be working in the education side of AD Instruments. Um, I am our LT biology application specialist here. Um, a little bit about AD Instruments as a company. We've been around for about 30 years, maybe a little bit longer now. Um, but we started out as a company with a father and a son who realized that physiology research was a little outdated and we had technology that could make it more useful. So they created data acquisition hardware and software for physiology. And it started to be used pretty commonly in classrooms and the company as a whole realized like, oh, we need to make this product more for educators and less for researchers. So we kind of split into education and research. And through several iterations of lab station and lab tutor, we've developed LT. And so LT is our online learning platform. And that's what we're going to talk about a little bit today. It's cloud based and is really nice for students because they have their data in the lab, but then they can also access that data when they're at home and they need to do a lot of their data analysis. Um, so without further ado, I'll move on to talking about our biology collection specifically. Um, we do have 35 labs in our collection that were created in partnership with Vernier and Biorad. Uh, we created that partnership because we have the same motivation that we want to make science easier and more accessible for students. And we know that that's the way to prepare students for the professional field. Um, so we have some Biorad labs, some distance learning labs, and then we're today we'll be focused in on the GOT protein lab. I'm just going to switch over so you'll see our LT biology collection. So you'll have access to this in a look towards the end of the webinar, but these are all of the labs that we have in LT. Um, so, and you all should have received an email invitation. So I'll drag this over. And that way you can get access to your course that I created. So you should have received an invitation like this, confirm invitation. If it's not in your main inbox, I recommend checking your spam. Um, and if you did not receive this, feel free to send me a message. And during the talk, I'll make sure you get access. Um, since we're going to be going along with this. Once you log in, if you haven't logged in before, you'll have to create a login. I've created a login, so I'll be able to log in and access the lab. And you'll click on the GOT Protein May 2023 course. It'll pull up this. You can hit the GOT Protein webinar and then click here. And this way you'll be able to follow along with where we're at. If you have any questions or issues, let me know during. Um, towards the end, after our live demo, I'll go into more details about LT and uh, some of the accessibility and active learning components that are in, in here. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions and you can log into LT, if you're on a laptop, it might be easier to log in on your phone. Um, or if you have a second screen, it might be easier to log in on that. So with that, I will pass it off to John. Back to that. Oop. There we go. You're muted, John. Sorry, I was going to say, can you go back to the slides really quick, what you did, which is wonderful. So um, I just wanted to let you know that what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking about a lab activity that is in LT. So um, we have LT. And then to do this lab, you will need a Godrex Spectrovis Plus. That is our spectrometer. So it's our small, affordable spectrometer. And then you also need the Got Protein Kit, which is a kit um, from BioRad. So I just wanted to stress that you do data collection in LT directly, and I will show you how to do that. 
And then also there is sample data that you can um, access if you need to, but we're gonna try to focus on just showing you how to use a spectrometer in LT, and then we can all analyze data together using the instance of LT that you got. So if we go to the next slide, um, I think Damon can talk about the GOT protein kit and its components, and then we'll go to LT. Yep. So the GOT protein kit um, is an easy way to bring a Bradford assay into the classroom. So actually, let's lay back up one step. For those of you that haven't worked with Biorad materials before, Biorad is a large biotech company. They've been around since the 1950s. And about 25 years ago, they had a high school educator who joined the staff who realized that there's all this really amazing advances taking place in the world of biology in a sector called biotech, but they weren't really coming into the classroom easily. And so this individual, Ron Mardigian, kind of convinced Biorad's executive staff at the time that we really needed to do this from a mission and vision sort of view to like make sure that people have access to being able to teach this stuff so that students are prepared if they want to go into that industry or just to be able to make decisions about what we do with these technologies as they develop. So the GOT protein kit is one of about 30 different lab experiences we offer that basically take reagent level or um, research level reagents from our production line they are going out to researchers and then make them in a format that's easy to bring into a classroom. So that has instructions, um, aliquot sizes that make it easier for you to execute in the classroom. So the GOT protein kit is one of our earlier kits um, that takes this technology that's actually really important, which at the top level sounds very simple. You just wanna be able to quantify proteins. Why would you want to quantify proteins? Well, proteins tend to be the products of a lot of biotechnology companies. Um, and some of these are very valuable. So it's really important that you know how much, say, human growth hormone you have, because every one gram is about $1.5 million. Or in the medical world, different disease states come about, or you're able to see them by diagnosing different protein concentrations in different body fluids. And so this has multiple places where this kind of fits into different careers. Within this kit, uh, what you have is you get a large bottle of the Comassi stain, also known as the Bradford reagent. And this allows you to basically build up to 80 workstations. And if you put four students in each workstation, that means that just one single kit can basically serve up to 320 students. So it's a really great bang for the buck. In the kit, you get the Bradford reagent, PBS, which is just the buffer system you're going to use to dilute proteins in, and then a set of industry recognized standards in order to set up your standard curve with, and then the plastics that you need in order to do this, and that's cubettes and things like that. So the only thing you really have to bring is the students, some distilled water, and some pipettes, and everything else is in the kit for you. Go ahead and go to the next slide. The core component of a Bradford assay is the Comassi stain. So Comassi is a stain that has been around for over 100 years. Um, and actually, its name gets derived from Comas in Ghana. Um, but it really wasn't turned into an assay for proteins until the 1970s. And pop a little of how this works. This highly aromatic uh, stain structure uh, can bind to different side groups of amino acids. And as it does this, it will allow it to basically shift its absorbance. So without any protein around, its absorbance is 470 nanometers. And so to the naked eye, it's kind of this bluish, brownish, rusty jumble. However, though, add a little bit of protein towards it, and it quickly shifts up towards 595. And so if you've got a really high concentration of protein in your solution, you all of a sudden go from this kind of brown, rusty solution to a bright blue solution. And with the aid of a spectrophotometer, you're going to be able to get a very, very precise diagnosis of how much protein you actually have in your sample. And the way that we'll do that is with what we see on the next slide. This is Beer's Law. So Beer's Law is the idea that uh, the absorbance is proportional to the amount of a solute that you have in your sample. So the absorbance equals the molar absorptivity times the path length times the concentration of a compound that's in your solution. Uh, since we have a set of standards that come with the kit, students can set up a standard versus their absorbance, knowing the concentration of the standards, derive a standard um, <clears throat> or an equation for a standard line curve fit for it, and then be able to take an absorbance from an unknown, plug it in there, and be able to tell you exactly how much protein is in that sample that they're looking at. Go ahead and go to the next one. And I think we're going to turn it over to John now in order to actually see this in action on a spectrophotometer and LT. 
Yeah, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to go into LT and I'm going to show you the spectrometer and parts and pieces that we're going to be using for this. So just give me a moment. And I've resent those invitations. So if anyone still doesn't have it, like I said, check your spam, but if it's still not there, let me know. Um, hopefully you should all have it by now. And while John sets that up, one thing to know is John today is going to be using reagents that are a year old. And this brings up a really nice thing about most BiRed kits is that we guarantee everything we send you for one year. Uh, the Bradford assay is very, very stable, um, especially if you store the standards um, within a refrigerator. Uh, we guarantee them for a year, but they easily have a longer shelf life than that. If those questions ever come up, hey, I've got this kit and it's been sitting around a little bit longer than your guys guarantee, you can always send me an email and I can tell you, you know what, this is probably more of what you expect the shelf life of this to be. You're good. You're not good on that. Great. So can everyone hear me? Great. So one of the other things that's great about this kit, hopefully you can also see, I've got a little spectrometer here that I'm going to show you how I'm going to use. The kit is just great because it comes with um, like a pack of 100 cuvette caps. It literally comes with 100 wonderful cuvettes that you would use for this. Um, I've just pulled out a little bit of Kumasi. This is the Kumasi stain right here. Buffer, which I've mixed into a 1x buffer solution. And then what's really nice is it also comes with these beautiful standards. Um, don't worry, each one of these standards is clearly labeled. And this is what we would create to make our standard curve. I've just marked them here with an X because those are the ones I've opened. It comes with so much that it's it's just an amazing kit to be able to use. Like I've only used these. It's also incredibly simple to prep and set up. Um, you just need a little bit of milk or high and uh, some high protein milk sample. So here's just some nonfat milk. This is just a high protein quote unquote milk that I at uh, at 100 percent. You dilute those a little bit. And then, of course, the other thing that's really useful to use is I have my pipetters. You need a P1000 and a P2 to 20, although uh, I believe a P, what, tw uh, up to 200 to work too, because it's, you're really going to be just pipetting in 20 microliters. And then, you know, pipette tips. And what's really great too is it even comes with a nice kit right here, the Got Protein Kit with all the instructions. So let's just say that like me, you were prepping for this lab right before this webinar and you need to get everything out. It took me maybe like 20 minutes to get everything set up to do. So it's a really great lab. All right, so let me go into LT for you all here. So I'm going to, let me just check chat really quick. Okay, everybody's got it, terrific, wonderful. I just wanted to let you know that you can follow along with most of what we're going to do here. Um, in LT. So if you log in and use it, you should be able to follow along and see everything. I'm going to be switching back and forth between the live view of the camera and then LT. So if you log into LT, one of the great things that I think is terrific about LT is remember all that content that Damon and I and Haley just gave you about like macromolecules, proteins, Kumasi. It's all here. LT is like a, a lab notebook online that has all of this information that also allows you to do live data collection in it. So you have great pictures, you have great content, it allows you to collect data, analyze data, and even do lab reports. So for example, um, this lab that, that uses the Got Protein Kit is really an introduction to macromolecules and talking about proteins. We all know that proteins are really important. We also all know, right, that proteins are made, basically there are genes in DNA that are transcribed into RNA that are then translated into protein. Why are proteins important? That's really important for students to know. I used to tell my students all the time, proteins are the things that do things. They always used to laugh at that, but it makes sense. They, they literally are the things that do things, whether they're enzymes, receptors, structural proteins, um, they are the things that do things. Um, and most importantly, they, they catalyze chemical reactions as well. But then there's this great little um, table that discusses all of these different types of proteins. And I, you know, like what is myosin? Well, that's from muscle. What's keratin, hemoglobin, immunoglobulins. Um, so all of that information that you that you would need is also right here. So 
you can be teaching it, discussing it, lecturing about it, but it's also going to be right in LTE to um, help your students understand it. If I go to the next page, we go into the basics of macromolecules, right? So for amino acids, for proteins, proteins are made up of amino acids. Amino acids have an amino group, a carboxyl group, and then the side chain. The side chain is the really important part, right? That can be um, basic, charged, um, neutral, et cetera. And the, it's the R groups that give the um, protein structure its really neat uh, features, right? We link those amino acids together. So it talks about how you form a dipeptide, what type of bonding is used there. And then once again, we really get into the really um, core piece here, which is you know, protein structure. Uh, primary structure is the amino acids, the number of amino acids all in the chain, which ones they are. Those fold together to form secondary structure like beta sheets and helices. The entire polypeptide structure altogether is its tertiary structure. And then if you have many polypeptides um, together, like if you, this probably looks very much like hemoglobin because I think it's modeled after it, that's its quaternary structure. Um, I really like this lab activity because in addition to just teaching about a standard curve and protein content, the Bradford assay is really looking at primary structure because it's bonding to very specific amino acids. And there's a lab later that you can look at um, if you want to in this, in the gut protein kit that compares the Bayeret reagent to the Bradford reagent. And they're dependent on uh, different types of structure and proteins. Now, I remember uh, Damon talked about how what we're going to do is we're going to be um, creating a standard curve. What is a standard curve? Uh, right. Well, we have a series of standards of different protein concentrations. We react them with Kumasi G250, and that's going to give us a series of absorbances. That's going to be linear, and we'll be able to determine the concentration of an unknown. Down at the bottom here, it has the learning objectives, which are to create a standard protein curve using the Bradford assay, explain how a standard curve can be used to determine the unknown concentration of a solution, and then determine the concentration of, a, of milk and high protein drink, and then also uh, compare the respective abilities of Bradford and Bayeret reagents. There's other things in this activity as well. So let me go to the next um, page here. Before students get started though, it's important to challenge them so that they can, they, you know that they understand what they're doing next. So we have a few questions. So what determines the primary structure of a protein? You can all, you can all guess, do this yourself in LTE. Remember, it's the sequence of amino acids. And then the students can also check their answer to see if they got it right. And this is one of the things I, I really love about LT is it provides students with direct feedback right away so they can see whether they're getting something right. It's really helpful. There are also um, short fill-in answers. So not just selections or multiple choice. So explain how you can use a spectrometer to determine the protein concentration of an unknown sample. With reference to Beer's Law, they could explain that here using text. And then this is a really nice feature in LT. Um, we can sort these features into how the Bradford and the Bayeret reagent work. So let's see here, interacts with R groups of specific amino acids, that's the Bradford. Uh, produces a blue color, as Damon said, when the proteins uh, interact with the Bradford, it turns blue. That must mean that the Bayeret reagent is these two. And now we can check that answer. And hey, I got it all correct. Amazing. I, I helped write. I helped write this lab. I got them all correct. That's a good sign. Um, so let's get to the the nuts and bolts here, and what we're probably all been waiting for, which is data collection. So to do this lab, it's going to tell us the materials and setup that we need. We need a Godrex Spectrovis Plus. We need some cuvettes with caps. Um, those all come with the Got Protein Kit. Uh, micropipette tips, a graduated cylinder, a wash bottle, pen, and goggles. If you want to do the extension, you might need a pH sensor, and then all the consumables. And what's really great is almost all of these consumables actually come in the Got Protein kit, uh, except the non-fat milk protein and tryptophan, and then um, the high pro high the milk and high protein drink, which I just went and bought at the store for like you know two dollars each. It's incredibly affordable. All right. Um, what's also terrific about the lab activity is all of the instructions on how to prepare the stocks, 
Like this would normally be what you as an instructor would be seeing behind the scenes and doing and prepping for your students. It's all right here. So if you page through these examples, it will tell you how to dilute your samples to make high protein, the, um, the protein drink, how to dilute it, um, how to dilute the milk protein. It also tells you like how to actually prepare your protein standards and how to prepare your unknown solutions. So all of the things that the students need or that you would need to prep this lab are all right here in LT. And I just wanna show you that, that I, I already have all of that. So these are my standards. You can see here's some PBS. This is just normal Bradford. Here's, um, let me get to show this on a white background. There's some uh, Bradford that's not been reacted very well. It's not we've got a high protein concentration. Here's the two standard. You can see it's bright blue. It's much bluer. And then here is uh, just milk. You can see that that's you know slightly blue. And here's high protein. It's a lot bluer. So I mean, you could also do this lab you know qual qualitatively if you want. But the nice thing about the spectrometer is we can do all of it quantitatively. So let's just, I'm gonna stop back here. Let's go back to LT. The next step is we need to calibrate the spectrometer. There's a great video. So LT has these really amazing videos that will show you how to connect everything, how to use it, how to calibrate the device. I'm gonna plug in my spectrometer. Don't worry, I'm not gonna make you watch a full minute of this video, but I wanted to let you know that the video's there. Um, one of the key things about the brat, this lab in particular is the blank that you wind up using. The blank in this case is going to be unreacted Bradford. All right, so hopefully for all of you that are in LT, you probably see that we've defaulted to using sample data. Um, that's what these samples are here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch this and I'm actually gonna record data. So I'm recording live now from a spectrometer. So it's just initializing and then it's waiting for the lamp to warm up. And you could see right now I'm actually plugged into a computer. All the lights are green. It's, it's collecting data into LT. Um, if the device has been um, plugged in to a computer and it's warmed up for a period of time, you don't have to worry about, about the warm up, so you can skip it. Um, I'm gonna hit continue here and now I'm gonna calibrate. So I'm gonna put in the unreacted Bradford. So once again, let me go back here. Here's the Bradford reagent. One thing to know about our spectrometer is that the, the light travels this way. So if you look at the sample, the little cuvette, I wanna make sure the light goes through this path and I don't put it in flipped this way. All right, so now I'm gonna hit continue. Hey, the calibration is complete. And then next, what's really important is I'm going to remove the cuvette and I'm going to put in a sample that's been reacted with the Bradford because we need to know uh, what wavelength to track to create our standard. So I'm going to go back here to the, to the spectrometer. You can see here's the a sample. I'm going to put it in there. I'll go back here and then I'll continue. I've inserted my sample. And then it's going to show us a full wave spectrum, and then we'll be able to select the wavelength. So there is a full wave spectrum of uh, that sample. And you can see that it looks like the peak is right at around 590, 598. It's somewhere around there, close to 600. Damon, is that correct for Kumasi? Should be around 595, 600? Yep, 595 is what the books say. Great. So it actually was at like 595. So I should. That is like actually really nice. So I'll hit continue. And then um, it tells the students what to do here. So all of that is listed here. And then what they can do is they can also like select a sample. Um, on the next page, that's when they actually do their standard curve. So what I can show you here is I have the two um, milligrams per, yeah, two milligrams of protein per mil sample here. I'm just gonna collect. So it says obtain the cuvette labeled 2.0, gently invert it twice, wipe the outside. 
select start and then wait for the absorbance value recorded to stabilize and then select stop. That usually takes about like 10 to 20 seconds. So let's just hit start. So you can see I'm collecting absorbance in real time up here. I'm just gonna let it go across there. That looks pretty stable to me. I'm gonna hit stop once it gets to 20 seconds. All right. And then the next thing that it would tell us to do is rename it. So we were gonna, we would collect a whole series of samples and we would rename them. And we would say, you know, this is two. The name refers to the concentration, right? So we would do two, one, and a series of others. Now, it could be really boring to do this entire webinar with me showing you back and forth how to do this, a series of standards. So what I'm gonna do is use the sample data that's there, but what's really great is um, the sample data is actually quite close to the data that I'm actually already recorded. So I'm gonna hit data settings and I'm gonna use sample data. And here is all the sample data already there. Now, before I get going, does anybody have any questions about how the spectrometer works, uh, what you can use in LT? Uh, the one thing to know is that the LT right now only works on PCs uh, or live data collection only works in LTs, uh, only works on PCs. You can get the data in, in other platforms, the sample data, but live data collection only works um, in Windows or on a PC. So any questions? Nope. All right, so then let me show you the next really cool feature in LT, which is we can use this data. It's been collected as a function of time, but we can use it to quickly create a standard curve. And we do that by tapping on this little thing right here. And you can see we can actually, you could actually drag this around if you wanted to. Let's see, someone had a question in chat. Does the Spectrovis Plus work on Chromebooks? The Spectrovis Plus, the GoDirect Spectrovis Plus works on everything. So using our software. So it will work on Chromebooks, iOS, Android, PC, and Mac. It's just LT, the platform that we're showing you right now. Live data collection only works on PC. All right, so what's great here is I'm gonna select the, let me go to the next page here. So this is where we would analyze the standard curve. I've put a data point here and then I can just grab right here where it says absorbance 1.18 and toss it down here under the table for two, go to 1.5, tap on here, take a look, drag that down, go to one, drag that down. Once again, I'm just dragging right here where it says the absorbance. And then what's terrific is if I scroll down a little bit, it's taken this data in real time that I've dropped into this table and it's created a graph of it. So it's already gra graphed it. And then what we can do is we can label it, right? So the x-axis here should be concentration. I believe it's mix per mil. That's right, right, Damon, mix per mil? That is correct. Thank you, sir. And then absorbance. And you could even label this, you know, protein standard. Protein standards. Standard protein standard curve. How's that? And that brings up a good point is that um, I really never knew what Beer's Law was. I'd heard Beer's Law before. To me as a biologist, I just knew what standard curves were. So you created a standard curve. Beer's Law just refers to, and with the spectrometer, if you're creating a standard curve, known standards, the um, absorbance is going to actually be 
change linearly or proportionally uh, using a spectrometer. So they're they're kind of interchangeable in this case. Beer's law is very specific, but we've created a standard curve. Um, so then I've edited the graph. One thing that's missing, hey, what about uh, plotting a curve fit? Well, I can do that too. Here's a linear curve fit. And then uh, also down here, it says, hey, you know, put the equation of the standard curve fit. Well, I can just highlight it here, paste it. And just so you're aware, that, that's like a really small number. There are 8.97 to the, the exponent negative 2. The r square there is very good. So y equals mx plus b, b is close to 0. And then, you know, just so that students can understand what they've made, this is a really nice uh, graph here that students can take a look at to test their understanding. They can annotate it. And, you know, it, it basically asks them, hey, if we have an unknown sample of an absorbance of 0.6, what is the concentration? So students can annotate that. They can draw across and find out, oh, it's that point right there and then come down right about to right there. And I would, you know, you could even, you know, write what you think that is. I think that's probably around 0 0.87. You can exit when you want and then the students can even check their answer. And you see, it's gonna show them right where it is. Um, and then there's also a nice math question, which is like, how could you rearrange the equation of best fit to solve for concentration? And if your algebra is a little weak, like mine is today, it's going to tell you the answer right there, right? So it, you can actually, it'll actually show you how to solve for it as well. All right. And then the, the next thing that you do is you can take a look at the, um, Milk and high protein shouldn't be surprised. The high protein is higher than the, the milk concentration. Um, so you can record live data or look at the sample data as well there. And then there's some analysis tools that you can do to determine what the concentration is um, of the milk and high protein. And there's since you diluted, there, these actually questions right here are really nice because the students need to know what dilution factor they used. And then it also asks them, hey, like how much did you dilute it when, when you made that up? Well, we know we put 20 microliters of high protein milk and high protein drink into 980 milliliters of PBS. So they can determine that there. And there's just some other really nice questions of testing your understanding. So the other thing that I wanted to get to really quick is there's some other activities in here. You can compare the Bradford reagent to the Biorette reagent. Um, and that, that's just an activity. One thing that um, Haley might tell you is that you could get rid of this activity if you don't want it. Like you could erase it, get rid of it. But one of the things that I really wanted to show you as well is there's this really nice review and integration piece that exists in LT where uh, students review like what they've done, why. And there's even this really cool case study that I just wanted to bring up. And this is something that is not in the Got Protein Kit and not in the book that um, I wrote for Vernier. There's a really cool uh, case study on cerebral spinal fluid. So this is like a, a, you know, a real case study where you know, your students might say like, well, why am I looking at milk? Why is that important? And in this case, it's really great because you could say, well, if you have high protein content in cerebral spinal fluid, that's bad. And guess what? You know, you can use a uh, protein curve, standard curve to determine whether or not something bad is going on. Um, so there's just some other great pieces that exist in LT. Last but not least, there's an extension where you can look at uh, different amino acids. And I just wanted to show you that here, that if you have a go direct um, pH probe, I can just show you here that aspartic acid, which is an amino acid, well, guess what? It's acidic. Here's tyrosine, which is just very neutral. And then arginine is basic. So you can also show students that these things that we talk about, amino acids being basic, neutral, or acidic, you can actually really measure them too. 
And with that, I think I will just hand it off back to Haley. Just remember, there's also a really beautiful lab report that exists in LT. So I just wanted to let you know that this is a really rich and amazing platform that supports live data collection. Um, you can use our sensors with it. There's several different labs that actually utilize uh, BioRed kits in it as well. And if you have any questions, you can always email me at biology at and I'll be able to help you out. If you have other questions about the spectrometers or anything like that or other, or other veneer products, let me know. So I will stop sharing my screen. And let Haley take it from there. Sweet. Thanks, John. Let me get the slides pulled back up here. Perfect. Share that. Okay. So we just went through all of this live data collection and the GOT protein kit. And again, um, John and Damon have already done a webinar that went through all this really nicely. Um, that's on the Vernier website. So we'll share that with you as well if you want to go more in depth into the procedure and the process um, for doing that lab. I'm going to go a little bit more into active learning. Um, we talked about creating teaching this in an interactive and engaging way. So one of the things that we talk about with LT is how is LT promoting active learning? What about LT promotes active learning? So here's a couple of these examples. Um, but now in your LT course, you should have access to this LT customization educator tools, reach out to your sales rep. You can click on this lab or this module. And there's four labs that I really like in here to help instructors. These are instructor resources. These are not necessarily meant to go through your students. Um, but I really want to talk about some of these features within LT. I'm not going to go through each one of these step by step. You guys will have access to all of this content for about a month, so you can go through it on your own. But here in the LT panel types and applications, if you click on this, this is going to show you, I mean, you saw examples of the different question types that we have in LT. Um, John showed you a couple of them. But this is going to give you a better understanding of what that looks like in the administrator view um, as opposed to the student view. So here you can see all the different customization and editing features that LT offers um, to really allow you to ask any types of questions that you want to ask your students. Um, and the idea with active learning, so I just wanted to show you that so you guys can go through that. Um, but back to our slides. So the idea with active learning compared to what, passive learning, um, most labs are active, right? We think of labs as hands-on experiences. The students get to tangibly do a task. But often what we find our instructors noting is that some students don't translate the tasks that they're doing with what they're actually learning in lecture. Um, so our goal with LT and this LT biology collection is to try and bridge that gap a little bit and helping students understand like, oh, this is what you're doing, but it relates to this concept that you're learning in lecture. Um, and we kept everything customizable because we know that biology instructors teach different things depending on what type of course you're teaching, um, what advanced courses that your students might be taking later. Um, so this content, we have 35 labs. We do not expect <laughs> most biology courses to cover that many labs in a semester, um, but that's just to give you as many options as you can have, as well as creating the, using the labs and customizing them to the lecture content that you're using um, to help bridge that gap. And I'm gonna break into Bloom's taxonomy a little bit. And so back to our LT course, we'll go back to our course playground and your students can navigate. Um, there's actually a, a lesson that teaches them how to navigate around in LT. I've been doing it a lot, so it's a little bit easier for me. Um, but I really like this things to consider when creating content for your course. If you click on this, this will talk about all the different things that we think instructors should consider, whether they're using LT or not. Um, these are great things to think about when you're creating content for your students. And I'm not going to go through every single example that we have, but you can see the subjects here, typography, hierarchy, alignment, consistency. Um, and I really like the examples that it shows you because it can kind of give you this idea of what the content does or doesn't do depending on how you format it. So if you create content that's very linear and single-minded, it's kind of like listening to a monotone presenter disengages your students. They have a harder time following along because they're not really sure where their focus should be. It's just a lot of information. But if you break it down into something like this picture on the right, 
their eye is going to be drawn to certain regions of the content and that's just psychology and if you do any read any cognitive research you'll see that that's just kind of how the human brain works um, but the one thing i'll go back to blooms try not to get too sidetracked um, and you, again you'll have access to all this content for about a month um, and if you need it for longer reach out to me i'm happy to give you access longer um, but i love this information about blooms there's other taxonomies you can follow to understand what level of understanding your students have. Um, but Bloom's is really nice because it's visual, it's a pyramid, um, and the examples for remember, understand, apply, analyze, evaluate, create um, are really clear in my opinion. And if you're trained as an educator, you might already know this. This might be information that is like really basic, something you might have learned your first year of college. But if you're trained as a biologist or a PhD researcher, you might not have <laughs> gotten any of the training on pedagogy. And so that's one of the things that we really try to bring into LT is we want to bring the pedagogy so that you don't have to know all of this. Um, but it's also a great resource for people that do know this and they can kind of tap in. And then on this last page or page 13 of this, I used this when I was creating learning objectives and creating multiple choice questions um, when I was teaching. But just having these lists of verbs and knowing where they sit in blooms. Um, I love having this list. Um, and again, you'll have access to this for a whole month. But this is just kind of showing you an example of, okay, what is a remembering question? If I'm asking these types of questions to my students, really what level am I expecting them to understand the content at? And when you first present information to students, you're really asking them that baseline of the pyramid um, to remember. But a lot of times in lab, we want our students to be a little bit higher up in this pyramid. We want them to be evaluating what they're doing. We want them to be creating ideas. Maybe they're doing their own uh, problem-based labs or they're coming up with their own lab experiment that you want them to be doing. Um, this is really where we want students to be in lab as opposed to being in this understand remember area. So that's some of the ways that we're doing this and all of this information that's in here, our content team is taking all this into consideration when they're creating the content. Um, which we've worked with all of Vernier and BioRad's content that they already have, and we're just kind of applying these other ideas to the content, trying to make it more visually appealing. Oop, double minimized. And there you go. So that's kind of how we use Blooms in our content. Um, it's just in our question design. But with our biology collections specifically, I did want to bring this up. We didn't want when you create learning objectives, and we're running a webinar on backward course design, if that's something you're interested in, but you really should be focusing on the learning objectives for your students. So your questions should always tie into the learning objectives. And we didn't want to just apply to like the learning objectives of a general biology course. We wanted to think about, okay, what are the students taking general biology? You know, what are their end goals? You're gonna have students who are non-majors. Maybe you're just trying to expose them to some of the basic concepts so they understand what climate change is and those kinds of things to have a better educated general public. But if you have students that are pursuing a profession in biology, chances are they're gonna to wanna to get an undergraduate degree in biology or maybe they're gonna pursue higher. Um, and this paper came out in 2011 that talked about really the core competencies that we expect our students who come out with a BA or a BS in biology, biological sciences should really be able to do these six things. And if you've given them a degree and they're not capable of doing these six things, then maybe you're, you've missed something along the lines. Um, and so we really wanted to incorporate these six core competencies as soon as you can to the students. So we've also taken Bloom's taxonomy, all these other ideas about appearances and pedagogy, and we've incorporated as well with these six core competencies that we expect biology students to have. Um, and so if you're not using LT, I recommend looking into those resources and maybe applying some of those concepts to your lecture material or your lab content. Um, and then we have some images as well. That's one of the other things I like about our biology collection. We have our own team of illustrators that's tried to reduce the cognitive load um, and some basic biology images you might find that are used constantly. Might We not even realize how much that increases the cognitive load on our students. So our illustrator team has taken that into consideration, um, which I really like, they do a great job. But yeah, so after the webinar, you'll have access to our entire biology collection um, and we might even have access now. Let's see. So if we go back to the Got Protein, um, so you'll still have access. So these are the labs that we have available for distance learning. There are five labs that we just took out all the live data collection components of it, um, but they're all duplicated in 
the entire LT collection. And then we have five labs that are partnered with BioRad. So these are the labs that you're going to be able to purchase a BioRad kit. Um, and then as well as these instructor resources that we have. So again, you'll have access to this as a student um, for a month and a half. But if you're interested in more of the admin side of things, I'd be happy to go into some of that. Or you can we can schedule some time. Um, I've got lots of time to do demos and things for customers. So if that's something you're interested in learning more about, or if you just want to talk about uh, metacognition and active learning, I could go on for hours. So um, I'll leave it with that. If you guys have any other questions, feel free to reach out to me. Um, but we'll leave the rest of the session for anything anyone has questions about. Yeah, so just tap your questions into chat and we can answer them. Oh, they're also sending out a pre Q and a session poll if you wouldn't mind answering that. And then we'll actually uh, finish up with some QA. So, but if you also, if you have any other questions too, feel free to put them in chat. So I think one of the questions that someone asked previously was about um, the spectrometers and the GoDirect devices, the GoDirect sensors. And GoDirect sensors is a GoDirect biology kit that you can get that works with LT. It also works independently in other software, but LT right now only supports data collection on PC. But that doesn't mean you could use LT on a Chromebook or an iOS device to actually do some of these labs. They're actually really nice. And um, then there's a whole other series of BioRad labs that are actually used in the LT collection, not just got protein. Uh, I think the protein profiler kit, is that used? Protein profiler, uh, the CRISPR out of the blue kits, I mean, a whole bunch of the ones that, that we offer there. So I think seven Panda, total. Yeah, the Panda kit too, right? So the yep. ELISA kit, which is really nice. Yeah, and it's just for the live data collection. So we have a couple of customers that have PCs in their lab, but then students can still access the labs on their iPads or even on their, I've done a couple where I like answered some questions on my phone. So if you broke it into pre-labs, they could do the pre-lab on their phone before coming into lab. So yeah, but yeah, just the live data collection. So. We use AccuLab, not PC. Interesting. That's what Peggy Anderson said, and I don't know what AccuLab is, so I'll have to go research that. I don't either. <laughs> Let me see really quick. And just to pull one back up that was that came through the uh, chat earlier, there was a question about if uh, making the stock solutions was in the BioRed manual, and yes, that is there. And for this kit, it's extremely easy because really the only thing you're having to dilute out to make a stock from is 10x PBS to make some 1x. And then otherwise, all the other instructions for diluting out the milk samples, the high protein drink, all that is actually baked into uh, LT and to the student manuals. Yeah, I would I would reiterate that, that this is probably the simplest lab trip I've ever had <laughs> because the, the Bradford reagent you use straight. Yeah. It's really... You just put one mil or 980 microliters of Bradford reagent straight up into the cuvette. And then for the standards, you just put 20 microliters into that cuvette, mix it up, it turns blue. It's super simple. The, the only complicated thing is actually making your high protein and uh, milk standards. And that's even just really simple because you put 20 microliters of your, high, your milk or your high protein milk um, into the PBS, like, that you've mixed up with just 110. So you'd, I just normally, you know, put take the PBS, put 10 mils in a hundred microliter, you know, hundred mil graduated cylinder, fill it up, ready to go. You're already prepped and ready to do this lab in less than 30 minutes. Um, is there anything that you have to worry about, Damon, with it, the PBS or anything being cold? Um, Not really. Um, I mean, it's, see here. The only thing I'd worry about it with, with cold is any sort of condensation that might take place in a cuvette. 
Um, but with any sort of protein lab, I would say you always want to let things kind of get to room temperature before you start to, to work with them. Um, the only thing here that you might take straight from the fridge and, and use right away is the standards, but that's going to be 20 microliters going into a full mill. Temp the temperature on that just going to fade into the background, so you don't even have to worry about that. Um, yep, you could use other proteins for this lab. You're not restricted to use milk and a high protein drink. You could use pea proteins. You could extract proteins from nuts. And actually, I think that is part of the uh, other webinar that uh, Vernier and I did last year was showing how to do that. So you can bring in whatever source of protein you want, as long as you can get it into solution. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a great lab. That is the, uh, the other webinar that we did. So that this... Uh, activity is actually in our uh, a book called um, Advanced Biology with Vernier and then our Inquiry Biology book with Vernier that has lots of different things that you could do. But the, our other webinar, which focuses primarily on how to do the lab, we actually looked at like peas, nuts, nut milks, things like that, and even how to make your own nut milk and then look at this protein content. And I think that's even something you could even add into LT if you wanted to. Like you could you could talk to Haley and say like, I want to add a whole section on how to like students make their own nut milk. You could easily add that into LT, and we'd be we would happily give you the um, we would happily give you the oh the stuff that you would need to be able to make that happen. Like I've got a little prep sheet that I've written and stuff like that. So yeah, pretty much any protein that's soluble you could use. Looking at uh, nut proteins is actually kind of interesting because the nut protein content in like almond milk isn't as high as you might think. It, you actually get a much higher um, protein content if you make your own nut milk. And another context you could drop that in, and, and Byron has a little bit of a wrapper for this um, in another uh, lab that's based on dot protein, is you could have students figure out, you know, for developing regions where they have access to high protein content foods, what crops could they be growing in order to ensure that they've got enough protein there so that you're not having disease states that are uh, affiliated with low protein content. So you can have students go through, take different grains, things like that, grind them up, kind of make milks out of them, and then understand how much protein is there, and then look at the inputs for growing those crops in that region too, to give this kind of a more global context. Um, yeah, you, I mean, you could, it's, it's, like I said, it's really that if you want to use LT, this platform with live data collection, you need to use a PC, but if you want to just use Vernier sensors to do data collection, you could use any platform as long as they're GoDirect sensors. Um, one thing that I'll do is if you have any questions on how Vernier equipment works, you can always email me. I'm going to drop this into the chat at biology at vernier.com. So if you email biology at vernier.com, that'll go to someone in the biology team and we'll get back to you. If you ask any question about LTE, Vernier sensors, even Biored, I can also direct it to Haley or Damon or wherever it needs to go. Well, thank you all so much for joining us and we'll see you next time.